I've been thinking on and off about getting one of these for quite some time, probably more than, I'd say, 10 or 15 years. Just never got around to picking one of them up. They came back on my mind recently because I've been watching some of the ABS World Championships for the cutting competitions. And I found it rather curious that the style of blade that eventually started to become dominant was very familiar to a pattern that I have been, as I said, thinking about for quite some time. And that's the traditional Japanese heavy knife short hatchet, which looks like this. And if you take a look at this, you'll see a number of very similar features to the current ABS cutting competition blades. And I thought that was rather interesting. Dropped handle, squared off blade, relatively wide, has a bit of a distal taper, not very much. I'll have more specifics up in the description box. But I thought it was relatively interesting how they came there. And I wanted to have a detailed look at this just to get a feel for how the Japanese style of blade sort of compared to a uh, western blade and a traditional western blade of similar sort of intent nothing is ever a hundred sort of percent is something like this and this is the Essie Hunglis so the main difference getting rid of the sheet we also still have a dropped handle Again, sort of similar. Overall blade width, similar. Blade thickness, similar. Blade length, similar. Even the weights are very similar. Like they're within, I think, 8% of each other. The main dramatic difference is the primary and secondary grind. On the Hunglis, which is a traditional flat ground blade, they typically have full flat primary grinds, which are about 3 to 5 degrees per side. They taper down to an edge, which is usually 40 or 50 thousandths thick. And then they have a secondary edge bevel that's usually around 20 degrees per side. Now this blade specifically has a secondary edge, the one that's unmodified, it's the one that's in the middle, around 45 thousandths thick, and the edge is sharpened at around 20 degrees per side. The Japanese versions of those blades are extremely different. This is flat stock. It's not ground at all. The stock thickness is usually heavier. It's around 0.28 here, tapers to about 0.22, so it's even thicker than a quarter of an inch. And this is on ground, just full flat stock. It starts here with a very light flat grind. And this is chisel ground. Flat stock back here. It's got a very light hollow here. This is not hollow, but very, very, very light. So it's on a, obviously on a large contact diameter wheel. Very slight hollow, which makes it easy to lap. All Japanese chisels are like that as well. Because you sharpen this side flat to the stone, and if you hollow it out, you only make contact at the top and bottom of the bevel. Very easy to hone. So the angles I'm talking about here are total angles. So when I talked about the Hunglis, I said it was 15 degrees per, uh, 20 degrees per side on the Hunglis, so 40 degrees total. The edge angle right here uh, on this blade, and this is called a garden machete from a Japanese woodworker, but it's called many different names. But the edge angle right here is 15 degrees total. Not 15 per side. There's a 15 degree bevel right here. It transitions then into a convex bevel right here, which sweeps down to the edge. The convex bevel starts at the top at around 20 degrees total. That's 10 degrees per side. When you get right down to the edge, about, say, a sixteenth or so away back from the very edge itself, it steepens to around 30 degrees included. So 15 degrees per side. So there's a couple of interesting differences. The edge angle is significantly more acute on the Japanese blade, both down by the very edge, but it dramatically reduces very quickly to get much more acute. But then as you go up on the blade, there's all of a sudden a lot more steel there. The balance is also shifted much more forward. The hunglis is almost neutrally balanced. It's balanced right at the handle. The Japanese blade is balanced further forward, about right there. But what's even more dramatic is you can grab the Japanese hand knife right back by the end of the handle. Now all of a sudden the balance point is jammed extremely far in front of your hand. So what that means is you work with the blade up like this. It's relatively neutral in hand. You work with the blade back here and all of a sudden you got something that feels very much like a hatchet. You've got a lot of weight for it. It becomes a very powerful chopper. There's a couple of things I'm rather interested in having a look at this blade. Number one, is there any fragility, practical durability limitations because of the much more acute edge angle? Secondly, 
Is there going to be any wedging issues because there's no actual grind here? When you have a full flat ground blade like this, the only wood that it tends to get bound up in is wood that anything gets bound up in. Wood with twisted grain or wood that's so soft the blade just goes through it really, really deep and you end up with a blade penetrating up to around here and it wedges. Well, if you're taking two inch chunks out of a piece of wood, you're not that concerned about a bit of wedging anyway. But where this blade is so flat here and has no primary grind, it has no taper. It's very similar to a traditional machete in that it just has an edge grind. But of course it's much thicker than a traditional machete. So I'm rather interested to see, does it have enough of a wedging action to throw chips effectively? I believe it does, because I believe what will happen is that this dramatic grind here at the edge, and especially the convex sweep right here, should break the wood open. And I think I'll get some relief due to the hollow bevel back here, this hollow grind, which should prevent a bit of sticking as well. The other interesting thing will be, am I going to see any control issues because this is chisel ground? flat right here with a bit of a hollow relief and again the grind is on this side so will I see any drifting of the blade so those are the three big things that I'm going to be looking at a couple of comments get this out of the way on the blade itself this slot that's okay. cutting the handle for the tang to sink down into is just that it's a slot cut obviously with a saw these are just square there's no rounding there's no nothing when you pick this up you can feel how sharp they are and they bite into your skin when you move over at all not the end of the world all that takes is a piece of sandpaper wrapped around a popsicle stick or anything like that and you round these up but it is kind of annoying this is not a cheap knife by any means that they couldn't do these couple little finishing steps on it the same thing on the back you got these very square transitions uh, this sheath is or scabbard basically probably be more accurate is again traditional it's leather wrapped wood uh, the biggest issue with it is this it has really little to no uh, retention it's extremely noisy the blade moves up it moves down it moves side to side uh, it's just a square box that the blade essentially falls into so it's going to be rattling around uh, and this looks to be if anything sort of imitation leather uh, the snaps are wide open, they're not flushed, they're not recessed, so you're going to have to take care from smacking the edge off these and off that. Again, it's kind of a shame that for a knife as nice as this, that they ship it with a scabbard that is something they could find on an extremely inexpensive knife. Um, and the next thing is, uh, again, a bit disappointing, but it's a very minor thing. This knife is exceptionally dull. I measured the sharpness uh, in terms of push cutting. It's probably somewhere between 15 to 25 percent of opt optimal, which is very low. In terms of slicing aggression, it's almost non-existent. It's between 5 to 10 percent of optimal in terms of slicing. Uh, I looked at the edge under 50 times magnification. It's obviously overbuffed. It's been completely rounded off, and it has very little sharpness, and it can't do much of anything in terms of uh, fine work. So if you were to take a fine sheet of paper and try to cut it, it's not really going to do anything at all. And if you hold it really rigidly, maybe you can sort of do something. But again, really low level of sharpness because it's overbuffed. That again is relatively minor. You wouldn't notice that of an impact if you're just doing woodworking, if you're just chopping on the outside. But if you try to do any cutting on light vegetation, grasses and that kind of stuff, it's just going to knock them out of the way. It's not going to cut them. And if you're doing some really light wood work, like cutting something very springy like alder, you'd want to have the blade a lot sharper than this. And if you're doing wood, work, uh, wood whittling, slicing, that kind of stuff, trying to make fine shavings, debarking, you'd want it a lot sharper. Now again, it's not the end of the world that you had to sharpen this knife, but again, this is not a cheap knife by any means. Um, so it would be nice if a bit more care had to be taken in terms of initial sharpness. But that aside, that's the most trivial thing to fix. Uh, rounding this off is very trivial, and assuming this blade works out, I might get a nice leather sheath made for it anyway, because that wooden one is essentially just a case uh, that you're going to carry it around in. It's not any way at all uh, functional. So the interesting thing will be to take the Japanese sort of heavy knife and compare it against the common Western heavy knife, sort of uh, spare point, drop point, you know, 10-inch style Bowie type blades and see how they, uh, how they chop, how they cut, uh, what kind of difference you get in edge retention from the traditional steels to the Japanese ones that we see here, uh, and look at issues, as I said, of uh, durability, fragility, that type of deal. One of the things which should be immediately obvious anyway is that the Japanese tend to run the steels much harder at the edge, and I mean much, they can often be as much as 10 uh, Rockwell points harder at the edge, so there should be a relatively significant difference in terms of fine edge retention. It should take a very sharp edge much easier and it should hold that for a lot longer. 
and we'll see what happens in regards to chipping and a number of other things but it should be very interesting to use I'm looking forward to it as I said I've been popping around getting one of these for more than I think a dozen or so years and finally pulled the trigger on it 